Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to use the 3D camera tracker tool in Adobe After Effects. This is a really important tool as it allows you to track a 3D scene and then add stuff to the scene like it was actually in the scene. So for example, right here we have some text and you see that the footage is zooming in and but the text stays perfectly level on the ground like it is actually a part of the scene. This could not be accomplished with a 2D tracker just because of the scale involved. Well, it could, but it would need a bunch of points um, to create a plane and then it almost become a 2D tracker working as a 3D tracker. So what we're using here is a 3D tracker and basically what this is doing is it is just tracking what is happening in the scene and then it adjusts, it adds a camera into it so we're actually recreating the camera. So if you, I go into the top view, um, zoom this out a little bit, you'll see that it's doing the exact same thing. And what's really neat is I was standing still and zooming in and it understood that and it did the exact same thing. It's standing still, but it is doing a nice zoom in. So basically what you're doing is you're recreating the camera. You're adding it in the scene so that everything you add into the scene works as if there's a camera there. Um, really, really neat effect. So let's get started. First thing you wanna do is you wanna create yourself a new composition. Then you want to go cut it down, uh, bring in your footage and cut it down to whatever you're going to be using. You don't want to add extra here because whenever you apply the 3D camera tracker up here, it's going to take some time to track. And if you have, you know, 14 seconds of stuff you're just going to cut out later, you're going to end up waiting five or six minutes for something you didn't want tracked. And the tracks will be worse because it's going to try to get something that works for the entirety of the video. So you might be losing out on a little bit. So just remember to make sure to uh, cut it down first and then drag the 3D camera tracker onto here. Once it's on here, it's gonna do its own little an analysis thing. Same thing like with warp stabilizer, there's gonna be a bar that comes up here that says analyzing. It's gonna take some time, depending on how fast your PC is, how long it is, how complex it is. I went ahead and did that before, so this is already tracked. I just dragged it on here, dropped it, and let it track and analyze, so I'm not touching it again, um, so that we don't have to sit here for the two minutes it took to render this out. So then, if we click on the 3D camera tracker up here, you can see some points have been created. And the reason they're in this little box is because I turned it to variable zoom. And what that means is that, so it by default goes to fixed angle of view, and this means that you didn't zoom the camera at all. But I said there was a variable zoom because I did zoom the camera. Really simple, click if you didn't zoom it, click fixed angle. If you did, click variable zoom. And now, because of that, it is going to track in an area around where the end of the zoom is so that it can keep tracking the entire thing. Once you get to here, you can actually begin to select different points. Um, usually it actually changes the angle and like sort of pitch of this, like right there, you can kind of see it going around the edge there. It's changing the little target a little bit. But for some reason, um, due to this variable zoom and the weird way that it was created, they're all just facing me. It doesn't really matter. What you wanna do though is choose a point where you want to actually add your object in. So I wanted to add it in right here, which is why I you click on this point right here and you'll see. Um, you can actually select multiple points if you wanna create like more of a plane like so. And then what you wanna do from here is you want to right click and then create null and camera, create solid and camera, both sort of work, but I'm gonna go with the null and camera. And what this does is it creates our 3D camera for us right here. And then it creates a null object that will be attached, as you can see, to the scene right like, oops, right like so. We're just going to use the track null for some positional data. Um, it just put in there like a 3D object, which is why it's stationary. The next thing we need to do is once we have the 3D camera, that's kind of the entire effect. Because now we can add some text here. Um... I'll add Adobe Masters, really creative. There we go, we'll add, throw that in there. And then what I was talking about is, let's first click on this. Um, let's click the, that's good. Uh, let's move the anchor point to the center. If it's on the bottom, that's where it's going to center it at. So just as close as possible here, that feels good. Um, we're then going to go into the track null, down to transform and this positional data. So we're gonna do the exact same thing here. And all we want to do is just click on this so it's highlighted, hit Control C to copy it, go to Adobe Masters, hit Control V. What I'm basically doing is I'm just locking my um, the text I created onto the place that I tracked, which is why I created the null. That's basically the only use of the null in this, unlike the 2D tracker, which has all of the positional data on it. So then we're going to go and make this a 3D object, and I forgot... <laughs> Once you make it a 3D object, things will change. So go ahead and hit Control C on the position in the tracker again, and Control V here again, and it'll move it back to where it should be. Um, so yeah, make it a 3D layer first. 
And now as you see, it starts moving inward. And you can see it's a little bit worse of a track than what I showed you originally. And this is actually due to the fact that I highlighted a bunch of points instead of just the one. It's trying to adjust differently. So we can always, let's go over that workflow. You put a track in there and it didn't work out well. So delete everything, go back in here, and then all you have to do is click on this again. Be like, okay, I just actually wanted this point. Right click, create solid, uh, Nolan camera. Gonna go and create the, I did not need to delete the text. That's okay, we'll just type it again. Do the th same thing where we go into the track null, transform, position, control C. And the reason you wanna lock it to where you're tracking is because if you don't do that, then um, perspective can start to get off. So for example, something on right here at the very beginning is going to move and zoom differently than something sitting in the background. So for example, um, this block right here, if I started walking forward, in four steps, this is gonna go out of frame. It's gonna get really large as it gets close to the edge and then disappear. Well, this fountain is actually gonna stay pretty relative to the same size until I get up to it and then it's gonna start getting really large. That's just how perspective works. Same with the mountain, is I could walk to that fountain and it would look almost the exact same size. So if I put something that I wanted right here, if I tracked a point back there, it's going to adjust it like it's way back there and it's not gonna come out looking good. So we wanna make sure that we track the point and then stick the object where we track the point. So we're gonna do the exact same thing where we center this up again and then we're going to control V, lock it pretty much where it's supposed to go. I'm gonna shrink it down a touch and we are back in business. So now, if I go ahead and play this through, it's not working because it's gotta make it a 3D object move it back to right here now it's really tiny but let's go and you can see it tracks onto it just like so um another way to make this look a little bit more realistic is let's go ahead and add a little bit of camera blur to this because when you zoom you're always going to get some camera blur coming on the edges so we want to add in the camera blur as well again if you don't have anything right here remember there's a toggle switches and modes button down here and you can switch to the switches so we can turn on 3d objects and stuff like that and there we have it, it is tracked to the scene and you can see that we're gonna need to refine it a little bit. This one took me about three or four different attempts to get it right. So that's one of the other things with 3D tracking is going to take some time before you get a shot that you feel good with like this one. Uh, you see this one's a lot better of a track. Like I said, it's gonna take some time, it's gonna take work, that's a lot of what this is. But that is really how you use the 3D tracker tool. Um, let me just go over a couple of things in here. When you go into the advanced tab, the average error, this is important. If you do a track and the average error is above one, 1 1.5, then you probably need to find a different way to track it because that means it's gonna start getting to really, really noticeable um, jumps and stuff like that. So just make sure it's above, below a one in this and you should be good to go. That is basically it on the 3D tracker. If you guys got any additional questions, throw those in the comment section below. If you wanna see more videos like this, I release a video every other day on Adobe related stuff, focus around video editing and you know VFX creation and stuff like that. Other than that, until next time guys, see ya.